In Halo Wars 2, the power resource is used for every upgrade in the game and many of the higher tier units. But what if we prevent ourselves from using power? Are we still able to beat Halo Wars 2 without the use of the power resource? Well, let's find out on Can You Beat Halo Wars 2 Without Power? Let's get into the rules. We are not allowed to use power, aka energy, no schools are allowed, and this challenge is done on legendary difficulty, we'll also be skipping mission 1, force the tutorial, and nothing happens. We start our challenge on mission 2. At the start of the mission, we're given a small army, which we will then use to clear out the enemy units. Afterwards, we are introduced to the lead durability, the healing drones. A lot of Halo Wars 2 is designed around us using this leader ability, but that would require us using the power resource, which we are not allowed to do. This will make future encounters and future missions difficult and require us to think outside the box. We will keep moving forward, encountering the Covenant's base. With the help of the AI, this is an easy feat to do. Here, unfortunately, is where we hit our first roadblock. Wait, that uses energy to make a base! What? Wait, no, so technically the challenge is impossible! We are unfortunately softlocked until we build that base. Sadly, impossible to be Halo Wars 2 without the use of power. But that will be lame by ending the video right here and now. There is one thing we can do, a change to the rules. Okay, I guess the stipulation is uh, can't use energy unless I'm forced by tutorials. Here we will be introduced to one of the key mechanics of Halo Wars 2, the laser beam. <sighs> this laser beam can destroy your entire army very fast. To prevent this, we will make sure our army is spread out and mobile at all times. For one second look away from our army, it is possible that we can lose the entire army in 3 seconds. Our goal now is to fight the Brute Chieftain boss, which is on top of the hill. To be able to overcome the Brute Chieftain boss, we must build an army that reaches maximum population. This army will consist of Warhawks and Marines. Before we can actually fight the Brute Chieftain boss though, we must destroy the Covenant's base that's also on top of the hill. Once we clear out the Covenant's base, we can initiate Brute Chieftain boss fight. The boss fight isn't really super difficult. All we need to do is just run away when he does his super laser beam attack. And as long as we just dodge and get good, we'll be fine. After doing the same thing multiple times, we'll eventually beat the Brute Chieftain. And that concludes Mission 2, A New Enemy. Mission 3 Ascension introduces us to the Spartan Slam slash hijack ability. This ability allows us to control Covenant vehicles and deal massive damage to infantry units. We are once again forced to build a base causing us to use power once again. Once we finish building the base, we'll get some Hornets, which only cost supply and are very mobile, and will be our main strategy for offensive power when we are allowed an air pad on the mission. We will have to defend ourselves as soon as we build the base, where we will be attacked by the Covenant. A priority is to build as many Hornets as possible. Now, due to our limited amount of supply and income, it'll take a while to build up an army. We have to be very cautious of not losing too many hornets. Even though we can't build extra bases, we are allowed to build mini bases though. Since these mini bases only cost supply to construct, thank goodness for mini bases, they come in clutch. It'll be a priority to capture these mini bases when we can. First thing we will do is take up the Covenant base that is on the left of our base. Even though we can't build a second base, we'll make sure to destroy the Covenant base to reduce the amount of offensive pressure Covenant has. We will keep an eye on this Covenant base and make sure they do not do much with the said base. The objective for this mission is to get more points than Banished, which is a sub-faction of the enemy Covenant, so I'll be saying Banished and Covenant interversally, so... Our strategy to beat this mission will include capturing at least two areas. We will try to keep point A and point C. For area B, we'll have too much Covenant to defend. We will try to take the mini base in the middle for additional resources and to halt the offensive pressure from the Covenant. The mini base in the middle, will, we will eventually lose to overwhelming forces. For some reason, the Covenant has like a hundred units just wandering around the entire map. I don't understand why. I don't know how they have so many units. Doesn't matter though. They just like camping at point B for some reason. One thing we will do though is send our Spartan to point B and have him get down at this exact location. And the reason why we actually do this is once we finish the whole point mini game, we actually need to move our Spartan here to end the mission. But if our Spartan is already here from being down, we won't have to actually ask for him to this location. We could just send a few Hornets pick him up, and voila! Mission's over. Now, to get to the end of this mission, we have a strategy that we have devised to allow us to collect more points than the Covenant. Since holding point C is actually the key to being this mission for point A, they rarely attack that point, and then point B is their where they're camping, so as long as we can hold C, we'll be good. 
Another base we will try to destroy is the mini base to our right. Now this mini base actually focuses on building race. Race are very powerful vehicles and this mini base is right next to point C. With them dumping race and going straight to point C it is very difficult to hold point C while this mini base is operation. After sticking to the strategy and with a close race where we barely collect more points than the covenant we can actually just move our units to point B and pick up our Spartan and that will conclude mission 3 ascension. For mission 4130 we start with one Spartan. There are four objectives we need to do before we get to the last segment of the mission. These objectives will require us to rescue some prisoners from the Covenant. And each time we do this, we will get more and more units to bolster our army. Since this is a baseless mission and we can't use the healing drones, we will need to be careful with each unit. Once we save all four groups of prisoners, we will need to focus on the main objective, which is to survive waves of Covenant. Normally you are designed to use the healing drones for this segment, but again, that would require power. For which I have devised a new plan. The unbeatable plan of just getting good. No, I'm just kidding. There's actually more to that. The plan is actually is to rely on the turrets and our sparks. We will hijack the race, for they have a rechargeable shield, which will allow us to technically have infinite health, as long as we actually micro well. Once we do all the steps in our plan, it's just a simple thing of actually doing it. After microing flawlessly, with definitely no units lost, we survive all the ways. And that concludes Mission 4. Honestly, this mission was probably the easiest mission out of the entire challenge. On to Mission 5, the Cartographer. For Mission 5, the Cartographer, our objective is to destroy four Forerunner structures to lower the power force fields which will allow us access to the console command. There is one small problem though on this mission. Once we do do enough damage to the Forerunner structures, they will deploy the defense protocols. The only way we can get rid of these defense protocols is to actually use a Mac Blast on the structure. The first time this happens, Captain Kyra will use the Mac Blast for us. After that, we must shoot a Mac Blast every single time they do the defense protocol. The Mac Blast requires power to use. Unfortunately, there isn't any way around this and we must bite the bullet and use Mac Blast ability. I will only use the Mac Blast ability to disable the Forerunner of Defense protocols and try my best to not hit any enemy units. Before we clear out the first structure, we'll make sure we build an army of full population. There is a Covenant base on this mission, but we will ignore them. One attempt I tried to destroy the Covenant base, but we did not have enough firepower to get through the defenses. We will clear out the right Forerunner structure first, and shortly after, we'll clear out the left Forerunner structure. Now, the last Forerunner structure is behind the Covenant's base. With me saying we don't have enough firepower to destroy the Covenant's base, you may think all hope is lost. Don't worry though, there is a way to get around this. We hijack a banshee with our Spartan. We can take it to the left side of the map, fly up north, and come across a mini base. We will destroy this mini base and build up a small army. And with enough forces, we can destroy the last Forerunner structure and the nearby Covenant units that are defending the area. Before we do destroy the last Forerunner structure, we'll move our main army to the right of the base, where a cutscene will play, and the Forerunner super units will spawn in. If we do not have our army in position, the super units will almost destroy our base during the cutscene, which honestly is kind of stupid. And if that does happen, it's a mission over. Once the cutscene triggers, time is of the essence. No, no, it's doing the laser during the cutscene. No, no shot. No, no shot. <laughs> We won't be able to defend off the super units forever, we will need to make haste with our Spartan. We will hijack another Banshee, move it back to our base on the same route we took to get here. Then we will move our Banshee on a certain pathway to avoid all enemies. Once we get to the required location, we'll just need to map blast the Forerunner console. And once we do that, the mission will be over. Mission 6, Lights Out, introduces us to another Spartan, which will be a huge bolster to our army in this mission and all future missions. We will come across our first base. Now unfortunately, it's impossible to do this mission without a base, so we once again have to use power to build a base. Kinda sucks honestly. There are three main battles we have to overcome in this mission. The first one is to take over the Covenant's mini base that is through the portal. The second main battle is to destroy their base. Then the final battle will be another boss fight, which is just like the same boss fight from Mission 2, just slightly different. Step 2 and 3 are by far the most difficult parts of this mission. This mission's a grind. We will lose our army multiple times to chip away at the Covenant army. For whatever reason though, they will never go through the portal and actually attack us. They just sit on the other side, which is really awesome, meaning we can take as much time as we need to 
push him back. After weakening the Covenant army with many head-on battles, I ended up taking two Warhogs and running them through the laser field and placing them to the edge of the mini bases. I dropped down some ODSTs and this allows us to get our Spartan back up, since for whatever reason, you can't just fly over there. After many gruesome fights, we'll eventually take over the mini bases and push back the Covenant. Now, you are supposed to lower down the force field here by destroying the force generators, but as soon as you do that, a ton of Covenant units will come to attack you. Now, if you just take the teleport and go to the Covenant base and never lower the shields, this will never happen, allowing us to skip a difficult part of the mission. To siege the Covenant base, we'll build a mixture of Warhawks and Hornets. The reason for this is the Hornets will counter the Hunters and the Wraiths, while the Warhawks are very good against Grunts and Jackals. We will also keep hijacking the Wraiths with our Spartans to help deal with the race. The process of sieging the Covenant base will take a very long time. No, no, the one time I'm making this salt and they're like, yeah, you know what would be funny? Be... Eventually, we will destroy the Covenant's base, we will rebuild our army, and get ready to do the last segment of this mission, the boss fight. As long as we move out of his super attacks range, we will be fine. With some micro scale and mixture of Hornets and Warhawks, we're able to take down the boss, and that's the end of this mission. Now on to the mission that almost made me quit the challenge. Oh boy, from the deep. Mission 7. In the normal playthrough, this mission isn't the most difficult. You just have to defend waves after waves, defending from three point of angles. We normally make scorpions on this mission since they counter the locusts, but because we can't use power, our best solution is the hornets, which really don't do a good job, but they are our best option. The issue with this mission and this challenge is that we'll lose most of our army after each wave. I tried multiple times, and by the time I got to the mass locust waves, I just didn't have enough supply to actually build an army fast enough to fight off the locusts. I eventually got overwhelmed by all the locusts, and they just kept killing me over and over. I kept on trying and trying and trying, but then, on one of my attempts, a miracle happened. A grunt somehow ran away from my units and started attacking my base. My first thought was to finish off the grunt and move on with the mission. Then. An idea struck my mind. What if I let the grunt live and just build up an army and stack up infinite resources? So I just did that. Oh, okay. This works. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll just sit here and um, wait till we have like 20,000 plus supply. <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm at 13,000 resources. Oh my gosh, I think it's been here for like 20 minutes. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's like enough supplies. Let's see how hard this mission is. I've never had this before, right? Craft Nightingales before the game, the Nightingale. Yeah. <laughs> As long as laser doesn't happen. Oh, it's already doing a laser beam. Why is it doing a laser beam already? And I can't move out there, so I'm gonna lose my entire army. I lost my entire army in two seconds. Yay. With the surplus of supplies and army, it turned this mission from impossible to actually doable. After defending wave after wave, the final wave will kick in and there will be a scare. Now lucky for us, there's a secret strategy to make this fight super easy. We'll put our marines in the garrison and get our nightingales to heal the marines, which will actually out heal the damage the scarab does, which gives us unlimited time to defeat the scarab. Oh god, I don't know how I can do this. Got one star already? What do you mean? Keep healing the marines. Actually, I can just out heal the damage. Come on guys, just need no laser here. Oh, we did it! The Marines are just sitting there behind the barracks, just taking the Scarab in the face. And then they're being fully healed. It's literally like, oh my gosh. I thought this mission was going to be impossible, but we did it. I mean, yeah, there was five of the cheese, but the game gives it to me, so. Mission 8, Hold the Line, is like a tire defense game. We have to hold out for 30 minutes and defend the cannon. There are multiple pathways we have to defend. Now, we do get barriers that do defend the pathways that will give us a bit of wiggle room and extra time to defend the location but if there's a lot of covenant units these barriers can die really fast we will build hornets and nightingales since we need to be mobile to defend all three pathways and our base and also we need to repair things we do get access to something new that will be a great asset to us 
siege turrets. These bad boys only cost 900 supplies, which is a lot of supplies, but they are like siege tanks from StarCraft 2. They have absurd range, damage, and even do splash damage. We will build four siege turrets out of our base. These turrets can attack incoming covenants at a very far distance, which will help us to defend. As the mission goes on, we will get attacked faster and faster. The waves will keep on coming and coming. There will be more and more, making the last few minutes of this mission very overwhelming and requiring us to hold the line at the canyon. One thing I end up finding out towards the end of the mission is that you can actually heal the canyon, which I never knew, and it made this mission a lot easier than normal. Since the Covenant can just attack the canyon and we just heal it back up, while our Hornets just finish them off, it's, it's a win-win strategy. We'll eventually get Banshees that come in and attack us. They can't be hit by siege turrets, but luckily for us, our Hornets should be enough to deal with them. We will end up losing our base due to an overwhelming amount of Covenant units. Heal it for five more seconds! Oh my god, there's so much shit going on. <gasps> yes! Oh, no. oh my gosh, that was so close. And that concludes Mission 8, Hold the Line. Let's move on to this Mission 9, down. Under the Dark. This mission might as well be two missions in one. Part 1 of our objective is to destroy the Covenant base with our sniper, ODSDs, Marines, and Spartan. There are mines along our path. We will need to use our snipers to do with the mines, for they are invisible to other units. Once we clear out a few mines and units, we will eventually meet up with our Spartan. Here, we get a mini base which allows us to train units. Now, normally you're opposed to train snipers to do with the enemy units and mines, but snipers cost power, so we'll just build marines, which is the only unit we will have access to. Due to me grouping up to the snipers, we lost all of them. Even though this was very frustrating for me, we could still finish part 1. Our Spartan can tank the mines that defend the Covenant base and clear them out. Another thing that is going for us is the three Kodiaks we are supposed to defend at the mini base will actually help us destroy the base. There isn't really much resistance at this Covenant base and after some time, the Covenant base will be destroyed. We can now swap to part 2 of the mission. The second part of this mission requires us to put Kodiaks in three specific locations. Lucky for us, Kodiaks only cost supply, which makes this part of the mission quite easy. It will just build max Kodiaks to siege our enemies. Before we can do anything, we must destroy the force field by using that Kodiak. Once we do that, we could put our first Kodiak at location 1. Before we get to the second location, we need to destroy a nearby Covenant mini base. There is a mini force shield we need to destroy before we can go any further. This will bring us to our second location. We just need to clear out the nearby enemy forces and we can safely deploy our Kodiak. One thing I should mention is that if our Kodiaks get destroyed while deployed, we must bring a new one to the location of said destroyed Kodiak. We can move on to the third location. Before we can reach the third location, we must destroy another force field. Here, we get introduced to a new unit. This new unit makes it so nearby forces become invisible, which is really annoying for us. Normally, you would just use snipers to counteract that, but since snipers cost power, we have no way of, of seeing the invisible units. Luckily for us, Kodiaks has splash damage, which we can use the splash damage to hurt the invisible enemy units. After some time of sieging the enemy forces and base, we will have cleared them out. We now have a straight pathway to the third and final location. Once we put our Kodiak in said location, the mission will be over and we can move on to the next mission. Mission 10, The Foundry. Mission 10, The Foundry has two parts. First part is we take a small team to take down the elite on their guard leader. The second part is we get a control of Scarab, which is a lot of fun. We get introduced to a new enemy this mission, the Bristleback. This is a siege unit that can unsiege and become a flying unit. We have to destroy a few Bristlebacks before we can get to the lead leader. One thing that sucks is I forgot that a cutscene plays when we move forward enough, causing me to lose all those units. <sighs> Pretty frustrating, not gonna lie. Luckily though, there is a way to cheese the elite leader. The way we do this is we make sure we have either a Banshee or a Bristleback hijacked and one ground unit to get his attention. We can make him run around the map while we tickle him to death. Once he can't handle the tickles anymore, we can get to the fun part of this mission. Just like in Halo Wars 1, we get to control a Scarab yet again. And with the same cause from last time, we can't use the anti-air gun because it is broken for us. So we need to make sure we have anti-air to protect the Scarab. Our next objective is to take out the Covenant base. To do this, we'll destroy some rocks that allow us to move forward. Now, this part is a bit scary since it's just our Scarab and Spartans versus the world. If we lose a Scarab, it's mission over for us. 
With careful microwing, we can destroy the base without losing our scarab. Now, unfortunately, we will have to spend energy here to build our first base. We are also put on the 30 minute timer in which we must reach the end of the map or it's a mission over. The strategy once again, as it always been, is hornets and nightingales. They're just like peanut butter and jelly. Along the way, we'll take over a mini base. This will just help us to have more supplies to continue producing more units. There is also a nearby covenant base that we will need to destroy. Unfortunately though, we're not allowed to build a second base since that requires power and is completely optional. When we get our entire army ready, we need to make one last push. Lucky for us, we're doing really well on time. As long as we don't push too hard, we will be fine. We need to take it slow and nice and let our scarab handle all the ground units. Wow, our nightingale sealed the scarab back up to full health. We'll keep our hornets near the scarab to defend it from banshees and other air units. We'll need to make sure we have enough hornets at the end of the mission for when we destroy the Covenant's base, we get swarmed by a banshee attack. Once we clear out the banshee attack, we'll be done with mission 10. Let's move on to mission 11, the Halo. Going into this mission, I was really scared. This has always been a difficult mission for me. In fact, probably the most difficult mission for me just in a normal playthrough. First thing we need to do is build up our forces as fast as we can, get as much supply as fast as possible, for we're only given a brief period of time before the super unit known as the Reaver attacks us. This super unit does an insane amount of damage and does AoE splash damage, meaning we need to split up all of our units to minimize how much damage we actually take. It's very easy to get a mission lost here at this part, and this is probably the most difficult part of the entire mission, where the Reaver can easily destroy our forces and base while we're still building things up. Luckily for us, we're able to deal with the Reaver swiftly. Now onto a repeat of mission three. We once again gotta get more points than the Covenant. Our strategy on how we'll get more points than the Covenant is we'll build siege turns at our base. They have enough range to cover point A, which will help us defend point A. We will focus on point A for a while, and the reason why we do this is at the start of the mission, for whatever reason, the AI is way more aggressive and they have way more units. While the mission goes on, they get less and less aggressive and less and less units. So we just need to hold on at the start. One thing I should mention is that there is a bonus objective to save Bravo, but this is a complete waste of time and resources. Once we've built up enough Hornets and Nightingales, we'll send our three Spartans to point B. The Reaver actually helps us out a lot in this mission because they will clear a lot of the Covenant out for us at point B and point C. And when the Reaver comes to point B, we move our Spartans. This way we won't have to worry about the Reaver destroying our units. We will continue building Hornets and sending them to point A to make sure we never lose the point. After completing this cycle for a while, we will eventually get enough points to beat the Covenant. And then that concludes the mission. Mission 12, Last Stand. We get to play Tire Defense once again. Our objective is to protect Anders while she does her thing. If she takes any damage, we can't heal her, unlike the cannon on mission 8. The difficult part of this mission is we only get more units from Captain Cutter, and we can't use most of the leader powers for they technically cost power. Now there's no resources in this mission, but I will only be using air support and ODST drops since they only cost supply. Without the use of the other leader powers, it makes this mission a lot more difficult, but not impossible. Luckily, we do get Nightingales to keep our units healthy and alive, so as long as we just micromanage our Nightingales and not losing units, we should be fine. We do get a lot of reinforcement from Cam Cutter, which is really nice of him to send all those nice units to us. We get to play with the big boys now. As we defend wave by wave, eventually scares will come, and this is where it gets scary. As long as we save our air support and have enough forces in position, it is manageable to defend against the scarabs. Luckily for us, when the first scarab is deployed, we do get a super unit, the Pelican. And with the Pelican, the air support, and most of our forces were able to easily and swiftly deal with the first scarab. Shortly after this, Anther tells us we must defend her for another two minutes. These two minutes are some of the most extreme two minutes. We get swarmed by every angle, all these units that you can name off, and more scarabs. Now we don't need to actually destroy all the units, we just need to distract them long enough for two minutes. As long as we prevent the scarabs from reaching Anders, we'll be fine. As the clock ticks down, more and more units swarm us. So many units are on the screen at this moment in time, I honestly have no idea what's going on. I notice our shield health is at 50%, and I go on full defensive mode, keeping an eye out for any units that may slip by and attack the shield. As the last few seconds tick down, 
I can't believe my eyes. The challenge of not using power has been beaten on legendary difficulty. Even though we technically had to use power for the MAC classes and building bases, I felt like we kept the spirit of the challenge intact. I wanted to say thank you to all the fans, comments, feedback, and all the support. It means a lot. I am sorry though for taking so long to make this video. What I thought would be finished in February end up being completed in April. Well, I will see you guys in the next Halo Challenge video.